Is this you looking in the mirror, seeing if these imbalances actually matter or not? Let's dive into it. Welcome or welcome back. My name is Dr. Craig Lindell and at Prehab, we teach you how to take control of your own health. Today's topic is going to be muscle imbalances, specifically muscle imbalances that matter. It's likely not the ones that you're thinking of. Today, I'm going to tell you why you shouldn't care about a perfectly balanced body, and more importantly, what muscle imbalances you actually should be focused on, how to test it and monitor it so that you can stay healthy and perform at a high level. All right, let's begin with the common misconception that we should have a perfectly balanced, symmetrical body side to side, and it should be that way for our entire life. Well, newsflash, our organs aren't even evenly distributed. We have two lobes in our left lung, versus we have three lobes in our right lung. We have a liver on one side of our body and a spleen on another side of our body. Better yet, our legs, it is so common to actually have a small leg length discrepancy. You're actually abnormal if your legs are perfectly even. So it's a reminder that as humans, we are perfectly imperfect. Now I wanna highlight some muscle imbalances that don't matter, that is not actually common sense, and we get questions and concerns about this stuff all the time that we're constantly having to educate people on. So number one, that there is an issue with having a 10% side-to-side asymmetry between your dominant arm or your dominant leg compared to your non-dominant arm or leg. This is going to be more common with the upper body just because we use our hands and we're picking things up more frequently than picking things up with our feet but it is normal for your dominant arm to be stronger than your non-dominant arm, okay? So 10% asymmetry side to side, we can expect that and we can be okay with that. Another one is going to be a difference in range of motion in a throwing arm, such as your external rotation is way further and you have way more compared to internal rotation for like a baseball athlete, a pitcher, and then thoracic rotation in athletes who rotate hockey players, baseball players, you name it. These are not asymmetries to be worried about. It's actually an advantageous adaptation. Growing up when your skeleton is immature and you're doing these sports, you're doing these activities, your body is actually adapting to allow you to throw harder, to move faster and be a better performing athlete. If you don't have these adaptations, you're probably not a great athlete and you don't play sports a lot. Last but not least, Differences in how your body visually appears side to side. It's a shame when we have people come in or message us that, hey, one shoulder looks higher than the other. How concerned should I be about this? You know, one muscle looks slightly different than the other side. If you haven't had a major injury, a major surgery, and things just look slightly off, it's okay. Your body is perfectly imperfect. All right, now let's get to the good part of the video. Muscle imbalances that do matter. I wanna make one quick note. Of course, there are exceptions to the rules that I showed previously with the different whiteboard. But now, no matter what, I can promise you, these muscle imbalances do matter. And more specifically, I am talking about joint-specific muscle strength balance. It's looking in the right areas with the right context. So I'm not necessarily so caught up or concerned with your left shoulder versus your right shoulder but depending what kind of athlete you are, I'm going to be concerned with the muscles in the front of your left shoulder compared to the muscles in the back of your left shoulder. Let me go into some examples. When we're talking about the shoulder here, shoulder external rotation compared to internal rotation ratio. We wanna get a number on how strong are your shoulder external rotators compared to your internal rotators. This is really important and there's a lot of evidence to support this claim when it comes to baseball because depending on that ratio, you gotta think when you're throwing the baseball, when you go to cock it and then you go to throw it and release it, you want a balance around this joint in the front and the back to help speed things up and slow things down. You want an equal playing field when it comes to the gas pedal in most cases. So you would never drive a car that can go 120 miles per hour if the brakes only worked to 80 miles per hour. Same thing goes to the muscles in the front of your joint compared to the back of your joint. Same thing can be said now for the hip. So in sports such as football, in sports such as soccer, you want a clean, ideally one-to-one -one ratio with the hip 
AB ductors, hip abduction, compared to hip AD duction, adduction, kicking the leg in. If there's a giant imbalance with that ratio, there's evidence to support, hey, you may be at increased risk of an injury that's common in soccer players. Last but not least, we're going to talk about the knee, hamstring to quad ratio. So I'm gonna show you some really cool content coming up that you can refer to in a different video where we show exactly how to do this. But this is a really important one, especially with lower body athletes, soccer players, basketball, you name it. When we're talking about ACL prevention or people that are rehabbing ACL injuries, we want a decent hamstring to quad ratio, ideally two thirds, at least 66%. It's measured at a specific ankle. Angle. I will get into that more, but this is the stuff that matters. Joint specific muscle strength balance. We want a balance on the back of the joint, on the front of the joint, on the inside of the joint, on the outside of the joint, because it plays a role in controlling movement and how fast that movement happens. And when there's an imbalance there, typically there's an increased risk of injury. All right, let's begin with the hip. How do we measure hip abduction versus hip adduction strength balance ratio? It's pretty simple. We don't need any equipment. We can actually do it with our body. We're just gonna do side plank variations. So number one, we're going to focus on hip abduction, the muscles that are on the outside of the hip. You're just gonna do that with a side plank. So get into a good side plank position. If this is already challenging for you, I would say start with this one. But what I would want you to work towards and what I would want you to assess is a side plank with isometric hip abduction. If this is really challenging, you can basically do lifting. I'm hitting the bench here. But basically, you can do lifting and do reps of that. And we're focused on good form, keeping the hips up, keeping the hips pushed forward, and maintaining that position, not rotating or twisting while either holding this position or doing reps and your body isn't dipping down. Do it on both sides, count how many you can do, and then you also want to do a Copenhagen. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna take advantage of this bench here and we're just going to lift up and now get into this position. Now we are assessing the strength, the endurance of the hip adductors, those groin muscles. So same thing, you wanna keep your hips high, push forward, you are pushing your leg down into the bench to lift your body up. And basically you would just do the math of, well, how long could you hold it on the right side, doing the side plank hip abduction compared to how long could you hold the Copenhagen on the right side? Ideally, you want a one-to-one -one ratio as best as possible. Of course, there's other equipment that you could do this with that's a little bit fancier, maybe a little bit more objective, but this is a great way to do it just using your body. Let's begin with the shoulder joint. How do you assess muscle strength balance between the muscles on the front of the joint versus the muscles on the back of the joint? We're going to highlight a product called Arm Care. So it's the latest tech in player development and management of throwing athletes brought to you by Crossover Symmetry. Let's dive into it. Arm Care specializes in keeping baseball players healthy and performing at their best through strength and range of motion testing. It has been proven within Major League Baseball to reduce the risk of arm injuries. The best part is you get real-time feedback from the app, which helps players, coaches, and professionals with informed decision-making. Be sure to check out the link in the description to learn more about arm care. What about the knee? How do you measure hamstring strength and quad strength to figure out the hamstring to quad ratio? Take a look at this video here. It's a clip from another YouTube video where Adele is walking you through how to specifically measure strength of the hamstring and the quad using a piece of equipment called Tindec. We have a unique link for that as well as a discount code. So click this link if you want to watch that video and more importantly, how to access that equipment. It's a great video. Be sure to enjoy it. Thanks for tuning in on this video, learning about muscle imbalances that do matter, and more importantly, muscle imbalances that don't matter. Assessing is just one part of the equation, but taking action is just as important. So going back to this board, right? How do you assess? How do you manage? How do you deal with muscle imbalances? It comes down to quality education and quality exercise programming. If you're dealing with shoulder issues, guess what? In our shoulder prehab program, 
we have a perfect balance and blend of rotator cuff strengthening exercises focused on finding that equal balance and optimizing that ratio on the front and the back of the shoulder. Same thing for our hip program, same thing for the knee. This is why we take the guesswork out of our programming and we make sure that we have quality exercise programming that focuses on balancing out the things that you need to focus on so that you can enjoy life and stay healthy and perform at a high level. Okay, until next time, everyone. Oh, hey, you're still here. Thanks for watching the video and taking control of your health. Make sure to smash that subscribe button and check out our other YouTube content. And did you know that we have a website and an app that you can prehab your entire body? Be sure to check out the link in the description.